This is the CrowView Note all-in-one portable monitor with an English keyboard. Kind of cool thing about this is you can hook up um, certain phones, like an RPi, stuff like that. I'm gonna hook a Raspberry Pi up for this. We'll try one of my phones. I don't think my phones support it, but maybe we'll be surprised. And you can use it as a portable monitor, but then it also has the keyboard and the trackpad and everything. And it has a built-in battery. So this is a 14-inch 1080p display. Again, the keyboard, trackboard, uh, speakers, and then I think it's a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. Later. Yeah, it is a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. Now I have the one that has the adapter board for the Raspberry Pi 5. You can get it without that or you can get it with it. You also have an optional Jetson Nano development kit bridge board. I've never used a Jetson Nano. So pretty cool little thing. I will get this out. I need to get the RPi 5 out of here. And I will say, and I will say one thing to be aware of is you are going to need to not have a heat sink or a hat or anything on when you hook the RPi 5 up. You'll see the heat sink makes it a very kind of uh, questionable connection because of the nylon like push through things that are on my heat sink. And I'll show you that. So let me get this out. Let me get this out of here and we'll take a look at it before I pop that RPi out of there. Here's the development board for the RPi 5 with this option. And kind of show you here what's going on. So you have these two things. This one's gonna plug into the RPi5 here. You slide it on like that. And then this will also plug into the RPi5 and this, they kind of stagger. And there's a certain way you gotta do it, otherwise it just won't plug in. And then you have, you know, your uh, slightly larger HDMI. The heatsink kind of pushes up against this, the little nylon plunger. I'll show you that when we go to do it. So it's not the best connection, but if you don't have a heat sink on there or you have one that's on there differently, this will work really good. Obviously you're probably not gonna do um, like a crazy setup on here anyway. I think this would come in more handy when you need to set up a bunch of RPi 5s or you just need to access one real quickly. Not necessarily one that's set up with a heat sink or like an SSD hat or something like that. So we'll take a look at that in a second. I will go ahead and get this going. You also get a USB-C cable, the HDMI, not micro, I think mini to HDMI. I can never keep the names of those straight in my head. And then you have the device itself. I guess I have it backwards. And then a nice little thing. Now, one thing that someone pointed out on a Discord that I'm on is uh, if you power down the Pi, it doesn't tell this to turn off, so you need to turn this off too. And there's just the power button right there. And I barely touched it and it's coming up. So I will go ahead and get this out real fast. We have liberated the Pi. And like I said, we're gonna take this one and then let's see here, this way. And you're just gonna line these all up. We're gonna go ahead and pop that right in there. And see what I mean? The little nylon pieces there for my heat sink kind of get in the way. You do get a connection. It's kind of sketchy and probably not great for the board. So if you're gonna do this, make sure you don't have like a heat sink that's got a bunch of plastic sticking through or something, or wait to put the heat sink on. Again, I think this is more for like deploying RPIs and you wanna get them configured and set up. And I really think that's kind of cool because you're gonna see how it kind of hangs off. It's probably not meant to, you know, like walk around and use it like a laptop or something. It's just kind of a neat little thing to get it going. So then we're gonna come over here to this side and we're going to uh, put that in like that. Just line those up and that's that. And now we're ready to plug this in. So if we come over here on the right, we will find that those ports line up with those ports that we just did here. And we're just gonna put that right in there. And now the device has power and now you see it coming up. And there we just use the power button to turn it on. The RPi is going to come up. I do still have the screen protector off. Let's go ahead and take that off. Well, hard to do with one hand. There we go. We'll get rid of that clingy loudness. And that's pretty much it. This is so much nicer than having to monkey with a bunch of cables behind you know, your monitor and stuff if you just wanted to pop up an RPi 5 real fast. Again, they had the options for the other dev boards there. Uh, you've got the Raspberry Pi series for 5, 4B, 3B, 3B plus zero, Jetson Nano developer kit. You can hook your smartphone, we'll look at that in a second. And then the bridge board, which I really like. 
you don't have to use the bridge board, but it's gonna go ahead and give it the power. It connects it, it does everything really nice. Then you don't have to have a bunch of cables going around, but you could do the cables if you wanted to. And then, yeah, they have that Jetson Nano developer kit as an extra option. Make sure I don't lose the screws from my RPI. Just to show you that it works here. Find my mouse pointer. So we can come up in here. Don't mind that clicking, that's uh, the screwdriver and the RPI lid. So you can come right in here and do everything. We'll go and open a browser. I'm gonna get rid of these case lids here. That's better. But see what I mean over here? Like you've got it kind of hanging out, maybe not the best thing. So if you were gonna use this more as a laptop, go ahead and run the cables. But if you just wanted to plug it in real fast, I guess it helps if I actually click on the web browser. Now I've opened it 72 times. The RPI was still coming up apparently. And then we could go on here and we just go to Google. Well, let's watch one of my videos to show you the speakers because I actually don't know what they sound. The Wi-Fi is being a little temperamental out here. So I'm gonna go ahead and give us some ethernet. I am in the garage. Wi-Fi doesn't always work the best out here. There we go. So now we'll go into my YouTube. Sorry, it's a little hard to type with that angle. So we'll come in here. I'm sure a commercial will pop up. So this is max volume on the speakers. They're not the greatest, but they get the job done. Let me get the microphone a little closer. But the display is great. You have speakers. Let me go ahead and pause this. Like, this is a nifty little thing. That way you don't have to like drag out a monitor, keyboard, cables, you know, all this stuff. If you wanted, you could just pop it right on here. And you're pretty much, and you're pretty much like off to the races. You even got webcam support that way. So you could add a little webcam to that. Perfect. Like, I, I really, really appreciate this thing. So let's go ahead and uh, power down the RPI 5 and then we'll try one of my Android phones. I apologize for the change in lighting. I think my expensive Amaran light that I've maybe used five hours just died on me. It is strobing white and green, so that's kind of cool. Also, unfortunately, my phones do not do the USB-C out. I don't have phones that do that, so I can't show you that, but I am sure it works. I just, I, I don't look for that in a phone, so I don't really have that feature. And again, let me show you here. This is why my RPI 5 doesn't sit very well on this, and it's just because of the two like tension plastic spring things for that heatsink. So if you don't have a heatsink, that's gonna work really good. And you always do have the option of just running, you know, the three cables, two cables, however many cables it is. But it's just so much easier to use this little guy. I really like this thing. I'm probably not gonna use it a lot, but anytime I need to set up a new uh, Raspberry Pi, this is definitely gonna be how I do it before I put it into whatever it's going to be used for. Because it's just so much easier than dragging out a monitor or messing with monitor cables and getting a keyboard and finding a mouse. And it's just, everything's right there. I can get all my settings set the way I want, install everything, update everything, configure stuff, and then I'm good to go. Definitely worth the price to me. May or may not be to you, but that's for you to decide. I'm just here to show it to you.